Welcome to Intermediate German Grammar, presented by the German Studies Program at Elon University. In this presentation, you'll learn how to form past participles, which are used in the present perfect, pluperfect, and passive. One of the most common ways to use past participles is with the compound past tense, also known as the present perfect. So let's lay the groundwork for past participles by looking at them in the context of the compound past. More videos on the compound past tense are in the playlist. A typical sentence in the compound past is composed of the following. The subject, which is the person or object doing the action. A helping verb, which is discussed in a different video. Words that say when, to whom, or for whom the action happened, as well as other words that add to the meaning of the sentence. For now, just think of this as the filler between the helping verb and the participle. And finally, the past participle, which you will learn about in this video. First, let's define what a past participle is. Once that is established, let's look at how to form past participles. Clauses in the compound past tense have two verbs, the helping verb and the past participle. These two verbs always function together. The function of the helping verb is to set up the primary verb. The primary verb indicates the action. Note that the primary verb is in the past participle form. Now that we've defined past participles, let's look at how to form them correctly. Most verbs form their participle by dropping the final n from the infinitive and adding g at the front. To repeat, this is the way most verbs in German form their past participles. Many highly common verbs, however, don't follow this pattern. One example is schreiben. Its participle uses a final en instead of a final t, and it also features a spelling change from ei in the infinitive to ie in the participle. As it turns out, there are four basic categories of past participles. A good way to conceptualize these four categories is with the table you see here. Most participles fall into the upper left category. Like machen, whose participle is gemacht, the past participles in this group feature a t at the end and have no spelling change. Many highly common verbs have what you might think of as irregular past participles. One category, an example of which is bringen in the upper right, has a participle with the expected t at the end, but it shows a vowel change. Another category, an example of which is common in the lower left, has a participle with the ending en instead of the expected ending of t. A final category, an example of which is sprechen in the lower right, has a participle that shows both the ending en and a spelling change. Here's a tip for learning past participles. When you learn a new verb, learn its past participle at the same time, along with any irregularities in the present tense. Some students also like to learn the simple past form. Two more quick notes. First, remember that separable prefix verbs separate when forming the past participle. If you need a refresher on separable prefix verbs, see the playlist. Second, notice that some past participles dispense with the GE prefix. These are typically inseparable prefix verbs and verbs that end in ihren. For a refresher on inseparable prefix verbs as compared to separable prefix verbs, see the video in the playlist. Just to be clear, past participles are used in other instances, not only in the compound past tense. The passive requires the use of past participles, as does the pluperfect. That concludes our presentation. Thanks for watching. Be sure to visit us on the web or follow us on Facebook or Twitter.